Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikens from Big Mount Studio, and we are continuing this series of customizing the navigation controller. And in the last video, we talked about customizing all the different colors of the navigation controller, and we ended up just getting rid of the navigation controller background altogether. So we have this navigation controller that just shows the title. In this video, we want to talk about customizing the font. So by default, you know, you have a pretty plain font here on your application. And it looks okay, but if you want to differentiate your application from all the others, you might want to look into customizing the font to better represent what your application is all about. And it makes your application more unique, and it makes it that much better over the rest of the competition that's stuck with using the default font here. So I'm going to show you how to change it. We go back to the navigation controller, and you click on the navigation bar. Let me just close this here, give us some more space. Click on the navigation bar, and over here you see the title font, and that is what you're going to use to customize your font. There's a trick to this though. So you wanna click on this little T icon, and it starts off with saying custom, which is really strange to me because it should start off with saying system. So this might be a bug, but notice even though it says custom, you can't pick a font. It doesn't let you pick a font. Well, here's what you do. And again, I might file this as a bug because it doesn't seem right. You want to change it to system. And this, to me, this seems like what it should start out as. And notice there's no point size either. So you have to supply that. So you start out, so you change it to system and then you change it back to custom. And now you can select your family. So here you can change it to something that is more appropriate to your application. Like if we pick papyrus okay it put the size in so that's good let's make it a little bit bigger and let's see how that looks this looks a little bit better and notice the font it kind of represents the app more it gives it a, a different feel to it and also if I go on to other pages it changes the font there so when you change it on the navigation bar it shows it everywhere on the navigation bar throughout all of your view controllers but you might not like this font. Instead, you might have your own custom font that you want to implement instead. So we're going to do that. We're going to install our own custom font. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Fontbook. And this is an application that's on all Macintoshes. And we have a font right here that I've already installed called Redressed. Now I see the font here and I'm like, okay, this looks good. But how do I actually install it into my Xcode project? Well, what you want to do is right click it and go to show in finder and once you find it here then you want to just add that to your xcode project so we're just going to drag and drop i'm going to put it in my resources folder here and this is very important you want to add to target so that basically adds it to the application so a project we only have one project here for this application but you can have an application that has many projects in it it's called a, a workspace, Xcode workspace. And this list might have multiple projects and you might have to select which font you want to use in which project. Here we only have one, so we're just going to make sure that's checked. Okay, we see our font right here. Okay, after you've added your custom font, now what you need to do is you have to add it to your info P list. And in order to add things here, what I do is you can just click the last one because I'm just going to add it to the bottom of the list. And then you click this plus, and it adds a new line. And then, you know, it has preset options here that you can select from. We want the one that begins with font. Fonts provided by application. That's what we want right there. Okay, let's expand that. You notice it has item zero. And this is where you're going to put the name of your font. But you want the whole name of the font file. So what I'm going to do is come up to the identity inspector and just copy this file just so I don't mess it up. Go back to the info P list, and then I want to add the value right here. Hit enter, there we go. Okay, now that everything is set up, we go back to our storyboard. I want to minimize this, expand that back. Let's go back to our title font here. And now redress should be in here, right here. Okay, good. 
So you notice it doesn't update the storyboard. That's okay. We'll just run it again and see how it looks. We want to make sure that that size will work for us. Yeah, that looks... <laughs> I was going to say, that looks fantastic. <laughs> that looks good. We can probably bump up the size a little bit more. And you'll notice this with custom fonts. You're never quite sure what size will look right. So you just kind of have to play with it. You go to the next one, and then, and then we have this title also using the custom font. Okay, so let's bump it up maybe like six more points. Yeah, I think that's a good size. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, good. So we gave the navigation bar a custom font. But there's another scenario that you might be interested in. And that is, what if we wanted the first word to be in one font and the second word to be in a different font? How do we achieve that? Well, through the properties here, you can't. This allows you to change the entire title, no matter how many words, to just one font. There is a way to customize this to do what we're looking for, have two different fonts in one title. And that is another property that we have to access through the code called title view. Now the way this works is imagine the navigation bar has a title property. You can change the text, you can change the title font, the title color, give it a shadow. And these are all through the title property. Well, there's another property called the title view, which is in the same position as this title. You can add things to the view. You can add labels, you can add buttons, you can add anything you want because it is a UI view. And anything you can add to a UI view, you can add to the title view. So how does the navigation controller know which one to use? Well, it's very simple. If this title view is nil, which it is by default, it simply uses the title. If the title view does have something in it, then it uses that instead and it hides the title completely. So let's see how to customize this title view. So we're gonna go into the view controller of this first view here. And now real quickly, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this works by simply reproducing what we have through properties in the storyboard and just doing it in code. And pretty much the way this is going to work is we access the navigation item. And here's our title view right here. And we're going to set it to this label. Well, of course, we haven't added any text or any customization for this label, so let's do that now. And remember, we're using a custom font, so let's set that. And we have a couple of different options here. What we're going to use is this one right here. And the string is simply the name of my font. Okay, what size did we use before? It was 30, right? So let's stick with 30. Now there's something else I want to point out here too. Some people might have trouble, they're, they're typing in their custom font and it doesn't work. Well, here's how you get around that. So here's your font, and sometimes this name right here isn't actually the name of the font. So what you can do is you go into font book, and when you have your font selected, hit command I. It brings up your information here. Sometimes this name, is different than your file name. So try this instead, if, if it doesn't work. A lot of times I notice the UI font constructor is pretty forgiving. I've used this name before, like, I don't know, let's, let's see, is there, okay, like right here. So I've used this name before and it worked, and I've also used this name before and it worked. So try, try with the simplest, try the file name first. If that doesn't work, then try the postscript name. And if that doesn't work, and the full name is different from the file name, try this name. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Uh, what's going on here? We're not seeing anything because we didn't give our label a size. And this is really important. This is something I want to show you guys. You start working with this with a custom font and all of a sudden it's not showing up, it's because it has no size. And that's something you have to set yourself. So when I created this UI label, I could have given it a frame. And with the frame, I could have given it a size. But because I don't know how big the label is going to be with this font at this size right here, I'm going to do something else. 
I'm going to use size to fit. And what that'll do is it'll adjust the frame depending on its contents. And remember, you want to call this last after you set your, your custom font so you know how big it is. Because if you set it up here, well, there's, you know, if you set it here, well, there's no text and there's no font. So it doesn't know how big to make it. It'll mostly, most likely be what it is right now, which is zero width and zero height. Okay, so now let's try it with the size to fit. There we go. Now notice it, it's also black again. And this is because once you use the UI view, it is now separate from the navigation controller style property. <laughs> you know, you have to, you're in charge of everything now. So we can give it a white color. And then that should do it for us. Perfect. But we talked about using two different fonts for each word, right? So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We're basically going to create two labels and then we're going to stick them in a stack view and then we're gonna take that stack view and add it to the title view. There's a little more work involved and here's how it's gonna work. First of all, let me change this. And for a font, let's just pick something that we already have installed. Let's take a look here. We just check what our choices are. We'll pick Menlo. I don't actually know what that looks like, but we'll find out. <laughs> we'll surprise ourselves. Okay, now that we have both of those, we want to add them to a stack view. And I think I'm going to use this construct right here because I can just pass in both labels at one time in an array. Notice it takes a UI view array. So I can just pass in both labels at the same time. So there's my array right there. I'll just pass in label one, comma, label two. Okay. And once I have that, I want to set its orientation or its axis property rather. Make sure it's horizontal. And let's see if this works. Oh, I gotta change this property now too. Nothing, again, why? <laughs> because, well, the label one and label two size to fit their fonts and we add it to the stack view, but the stack view itself does not have any size to it. So again, any view you add to the title view, you have to specify its height and its width. So that's what we're gonna to have to do. And I'm just gonna do that through the frame property. Now the width should be pretty easy because since we called size to fit on label one and label two, they now have a width. So we're just gonna add both of those widths together. I wanna point out a distinction here too. Notice on the stack view, I use frame.size.width, but on here I just use frame.width. What's the difference between those two? Well, as you might have guessed through how I'm using it here, this property I can read and write from. This width, I can only read from. I can't set that property. So just remember that. If you ever have to set the height and width of a frame, you have to go through the size property. So it's frame.size.width, and then you can set it to any value you want. Give ourselves some more space here. Okay, so we have the width. Now what about the height? The height is kind of tricky because remember we talked about before how you never know how big a certain font will be. So just because we use a different font here, Menlo at 30 points, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the same height or even the same width as another font. So I've seen some fonts that are you know, there might be only be 15 points, but they're like 100 points high. <laughs> you know, this like, it's crazy. You can't really guess and think that one height will fit both of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick the highest, the, the largest height out of both of them. I'm going to look at both heights and pick the largest one. And you can do that easily with this max property here. With max, you just pass in two values and it returns the largest one. 
So it, it'll look at the height. <laughs> I just realized I totally typed this on the wrong line. Oh man. Okay. So let's put that back up here and let's change this back to stack view. I have no idea why I did that. I got distracted. Okay. So here what's going to happen is it's going to look at label one's height. And if that's larger, it'll just set that as the height. And if the label two is higher, then it'll, it'll use that value. So let's take a look at it now. There we go. So that just shows you how you can use two different fonts in the same title. Now, of course, this looks silly, so I'm not going to use this at all. But I've seen a lot of people, what they do is they have like a regular font and then a bold font next to it. And that kind of gives it a unique look. Okay. Now, of course, there's something else. Let me show you this. We go to the next view, and notice now it uses the default title that was already in there. Well, that's because each view has its own navigation item that you see right here, navigation item. So just because I changed it on this view controller doesn't mean it'll take effect on the next view controller. So if we wanted the same effect to happen on the next view controller, of course, we'd have to give it its own words. We'd have to set the fonts. And we just basically have to reproduce this again. So I just want to make that distinction with you guys. Now, I'm not going to use any of this, so I'm just going to comment out this last line so it doesn't add it. But I'll leave it in the project because when I share this project on Patreon with my patrons, then they'll at least have the code there so they can look at it and reference it. Let's see how our project looks right now. Okay, good. So far, so good. Except for this back button. This back button we're going to have to fix. And we'll do that in the next video. Oh, also notice something else I did too. <laughs> so I'm surprised this actually held together. So I also changed this first label so it uses that redress font. So now that's why this font had changed. Because I, I had changed it before. Alright guys, that's it for this video. You learned how to customize the navigation bar to better suit your own application with a custom font. You can use one of the custom fonts that you already have on your computer, or you can download and install a custom font through FontBook, find its location, and add it to the project like we did here. You also learned about the title view, where you can use the title view to add multiple labels with multiple fonts. And in the next video, we're going to cover how to customize this back button right here, because I don't really like the way this looks. What we're going to use is footprints that go the other direction instead. All right, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with your friends. And also consider providing a translation for the title and the description of this video in your own native language. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.